The high prevalence of child marriage in Malawi is said to be driven by deep cultural and religious tradition as well as poverty. According to Girls Not Brides, Malawi has the highest rate of child marriages worldwide, with roughly one in two girls getting married by the age of 18. In a move to try and stop this, Oxfam Country Director Linga Mihoa has called on traditional leaders in Malawi to end all cultural practices that fuel child marriages. Mihoa made the call at Zumba Malosa constituency when Oxfam launched a project that seeks to end child marriages. Uh, Linga has now joined us over the phone uh, to talk more about child marriage in Malawi and the new projects. Thank you so much for your time, Linga. Uh, how widespread is this in Malawi? Well, it is widespread. Um, as you rightly put it, one of the highest. Uh, globally, we are unfortunately ranked 13th. And then in sub-Saharan Africa, we are fourth in terms of countries with the highest number of child marriage. We come after South Sudan, Mozambique, and Somalia. So that's quite high. The recent statistics show that 42% uh, of girls below the age of 18 do get married, and uh, that is quite high. And that's why Oxfam, over time, has decided to be able to mount the campaign on ending child marriage. It's a spike that we are doing within the ongoing campaign on ending violence against women and girls. Right. Now, uh, this practice is tradition in some parts of Malawi, and you have been engaging traditional leaders and parents who, on the contrary, believe uh, in this tradition. So how are you convincing them to end the practice? We're using mutually reinforcing strategies because it can't just be tackled by one strategy. So at community level, we've been working with traditional leaders in terms of sensitizing them on the uh, harmful practice of having child uh, brides. We are also supporting their ability to develop local bylaws that are using to enforce the issues of um, the parents, uh, guardians, and even the young people themselves conforming to the constitution of Malawi because we did a comprehensive gender uh, law reform which actually uh, made it possible for the parliamentarians to pass the marriage age, increasing it from 16 to 18. So what we are doing is supporting the traditional leaders to be able to know that that is against the law if you marry a child below the age of 18. We are also supporting them to develop by laws which are localizing the constitutional provision and also the standalone law that we have on marriage age. We are also supporting uh, access to justice. So there are cases where uh, we have reports and the community police are working with the police uh, and also social welfare and the Ministry of Gender to be able to support the nullification of those marriages and getting back the girls and the boys to school. We saw a spike in child marriages uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic. The Ministry of Gender undertook an assessment that showed that quite a number of girls and boys had been married off. I think we're making a record of about 13,000 mar uh, marriages, child marriages, uh, within a period of six months. And what we did was to use those statistics to mobilize together with the Minister of Gender, the First Lady of Malawi, and other key stakeholders like the parliamentarians to support young people to get out of those marriages, getting them support to education and incentivizing the local chiefs, the traditional initiators, so that they can change the negative social norms that fuel these practices. So, so far, we are winning because in 2017, a UNICEF study showed that we were at 46% in terms of child marriages. But as right. I reported earlier, we are now at 42%. So, so what would you say are your biggest challenges in this fight against child marriage? The paper barriers have gone down, very progressive laws and policies, but the behaviors are still very pervasive. And I think it's quite a challenge to change people's behaviors. And that's why we are working uh, with the chiefs to be able to address this issue. So the fact that the underlying social norms that drive this practice is really a challenge. The other issues is to do with uh, limited resources to get the young people, all of them, into school. Uh, education is free in Malawi in terms of the primary education. And also in secondary education, the government was able to move out some of the fees that the people are supposed to pay. But there are still costs associated with getting people into school. And I think the uh, endemic levels of poverty in some areas uh, are not helpful in terms of getting the people stay in school and complete education. 
Those would be some of the challenges. And of course, in some areas where we have big uh, estates, uh, we do have issues of child uh, labor, which is still a problem in Malawi. And of course, uh, malnutrition because of the issues of uh, uh, lack of food, uh, lack of uh, uh, appropriate income generating activities to support food security and nutrition security, you do have some young people that are actually malnourished. So those would be the critical challenges. But from a gender perspective, one of the issues that we are also dealing with is the issue of defilement and rape. For, right. uh, that has also been um, uh, one of the cases of uh, gender-based uh, gender violence that's been recorded. Uh, briefly tell us how the Mal Malawian government could help in providing resources for rescued children. Well, the Malawi government is doing a lot, actually. Uh, we do have a social cash transfer program run by the government of Malawi, supported by development partners, and also supported by its own government resources. This social uh, cash transfer supports households so that they are not stuck in poverty, and they are also providing additional grants where the households do have school-going school children. Uh, recently, Parliament also made a provision that for each and every member of Parliament, they receive a constituency development fund. And within the constituency development fund, there's been an allocation made towards education of boys and girls. And this is also supporting the young people that have been withdrawn from marriages to go back to school, but also a prevention strategy, because the longer we can keep the girls and the boys in school, the better. So those are some of the strategies, apart from the uh, the judicial reviews where, together with the Ministry of Gender and CSOs, we were able to negotiate our way into making sure that the judiciary are offering stiffer penalties for people that are involved with child marriage, child defilement and rape. And we are seeing this as a deterrent to uh, the injustices that young people face. So right. the Ministry of Gender and other ministries are doing a lot under the government auspices. Linga, I appreciate your time with us. Uh, thank you very much this afternoon. Linga Mihowa is with uh, is Oxfam Country Director in Malawi.